Well, we're back with our first conversation. Talent exodus from Nigeria, popularly called Jakba, a Yoruba word for run quickly, has been on the increase in recent time with several fact sectors of the economy losing critical manpower. Now, one of such is the banking industry. Uh, according to a report and a survey of job listings for recruitment website, found that some banks have even reduced the education criteria for their recruitment process due to uh, all of this. Now, some of such banks are Access Bank, uh, the First Bank of Nigeria, Guarantee Trust Bank, that's the GTB, uh, First Monument Bank, and the Polaris Bank, reduced their minimum eligibility criteria for their 2022 graduate trainee programs to a second class lower grade, that's a 2.2, from a second class upper class, that's a 2.1, and a first class grade that used to be uh, demanded from job seekers. This is just one out of many ways uh, the loss of skill and qualified manpower has affected the bank sector. I mean, this is according to expert report. When joining us to discuss the effect of mass movement of Bank workers from Nigeria is Abraham Great, a public affairs analyst. He joins us this morning from Canada. Uh, Abraham, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you again. Uh, good morning to you. How are you doing? <laughs> very well. I, I see you look very great. Apparently, you have no idea what's going on here. So <laughs> you look very relaxed and chilled. But that's on the lighter note. Uh, let's quickly get to the crux of this. What are your thoughts exactly? I mean, there's several reports that we have bankers uh, leaving the country, very uh, skilled persons leaving the banking sector. Uh, what exactly do you think is responsible for this? Well, um, my, um, my thought generally is that we take JAPA too serious of a thing as if it's only Nigerians that are JAPA in. But in the case of key, uh, you know, uh, skills, that are leaving the country like doctors, and now we're talking about bankers, the country need to be worried in terms of the skills that we're losing in mass. I mean, it is recorded that, you know, there is about the banking industry have lost nearly 10% of its staffing strength in the last six months alone in Nigeria. And if that continue, I mean, that is a very, very huge loss. But we have to look at what is the primary reason why uh, people are leaving. And we have to look at it this way. Number one is the economic reason. I know we have security uh, security issue in the country, in Nigeria, uh, but the number one reason is the um, economic reason. So when you look at it, the average salary that is being paid to uh, to bankers in Nigeria, I think is about 92,000 Naira, between 92,000 Naira uh, for junior staffs to, you know, about 430 5,000 Naira to senior staffs in Nigeria. Compare that to whatever is on offer anywhere else. Now, banking needs to understand that we are going through globalization, whilst the banks are still struggling with internationalization. Now, the difference is this. So the banks are trying to open branches in one or two countries around Africa or around the world, and they are still trying to treat their local staff you know, paying the local salaries, but people are now global. You know, people can see the job served, the job sites around the world, and they can see that their degrees, their, their work, you know, their experience, uh, their CV is worth earning like maybe 5,000% more than that. Every human being normally will want to be somewhere where they can earn a lot more money. And then the second reason is security. We are in a situation where for the last few years, the country is actually not secure. In fact, let's put it this way. The country seems not sane for anybody to live in. So no matter who you are, either you are a nurse, you're a doctor, you are a banker, you're a mechanic, you're a plumber, no matter what the career is, people are just thinking of finding another place to, uh, to live at the minute. So that's my, that's my thoughts on, on why people are leaving. Okay, but um, let's also, you know, begin to look at some of the uh, arguments that's been put out. For instance, if you have people that are leaving, you also have a population of people that are not employed. I mean, so, so you have a thousand and one persons who have these skills. And how come 
uh, there's been no replacement in the bank sector because it's looking like it's the end of it. Well, we, we have to look at that in perspective. The banks have their role to, for training, but also besides training, we also have the government integration of people. So, for example, a few days ago, we have people graduating from NYSC. When people do NYSC and they graduate, how do, um, how do we integrate them into the system? How do we integrate them into the country? What are the incentives? What are the social benefits of being a Nigerian? So first, you have the banks that on the, the, the banks have to really start the situation that is going on right now and profile solution to, I mean, people, are, people will keep going. And the reason why people will keep going is that there are countries around the world that need people. And they're going to keep fishing for people. Nigerians are one of the key people that they will look for because we speak very good English. We are well educated. We are, I mean, we, we have fitness. We have class. We have all the kind of things that people are looking for. So countries like the UK, like Canada, like the US, like France, like Germany, they will keep looking for Nigerians because they know that we can fit uh, uh, fill in their job shortage. So banks have to look at the pool of the population of people who are graduating, people who are going to polytechnics, people who are going to, um, you know, uh, uh, all the different institutions that we have. What is their recruitment strategy? But also, what is the return on investment in terms of when they train people, how long do they stay with them? Also, what are the intrinsic benefits for people? So if I'm going to stay in your bank, I know you have trained me, I know you have employed, but what is the need for me? So studies have shown that the industries or the, uh, uh, you know, yeah, the employers who gives accommodation, who gives transportation, who cater for the basic need of their staff are able to retain their staff a lot longer. Let me say this before. I pass back to you. It is very out of proportion. It's out of proportion. The amount of money that banks make in Nigeria proportionate to the kind of salary they pay. The parity is too large. And because of this parity, and this, this is what I found. What I found is that a lot of the banks, when they make profits, this is what they do. They diversify. Instead of investing that money a lot more in human capital, in exception of some banks, maybe UBA or what have you, most of the other banks, what they do, and if not all of them, focuses on diversifying their, their, their resources into other kind of venture, not looking at the human capital development as a whole. Well, let's also look at uh, the report and the survey that has been carried out. Uh, job listing from recruitment website. Uh, websites found that some banks had reduced the educational criteria for their recruitment purpose due to, um, you know, too many issues. So I, I'd like to ask you, with the um, current situation that we're faced with right now, I mean, the banking uh, services are not swept. Do you think that it's because of unskilled and unqualified persons in the system? That's what we're faced with. Well, there are sectors that can be mitigated by employing people with low qualification. But there are key expertise like the IT and other industry that they cannot just, you know, fill those gaps by just picking random people. But when they pick the low-end people, they can also profile training. And let's look away from the bank also. The country needs to restructure the education and training system also to be able to allow something that is called the NVQ, which is the national vocational programs in the country. What that means is that there are people who dropped out of university or people who went to secondary school, but who have gained, I mean, solid experience. My, my uncle used to be a chairman of Wema Bank uh, for many years, from the early 80s until, you know, much later in the 2000s. And I recall that all he says to us in the family, most members of my family were in the bank, working in Burma Bank at the time. Even if you have a secondary school education, he wants to integrate you into the system and then you keep growing and then you can go to polytechnic or university on a part-time basis. But what the country can do actually is that we can have the national vocational program so that even if you had OND or you have uh, school search and you have started as a receptionist in the bank, 
the, your years in the bank can count towards a degree. So what I mean by that is that someone who had been in the system for 12 years, who, who had the reason of the ranking, can go into a university and say, look, I have worked at a bank as a branch manager or as an operation in, in charge of operations, curate all my experiences together, and I think a, a degree can be awarded to me. Now, in many parts of the world, this system works. In the UK, for example, this system works where somebody had worked in McDonald's, somebody had worked in a kitchen, somebody had worked somewhere, and after a few years, they can put all of their experiences together, and voila, they have a BSc, they have a degree, or they can take that experience and go straight for a master. That is one of the reasons why some of these people come into Nigeria and somebody will argue with them they don't have a degree or they have not done that because there are different systems that can train people for the uh, shortage so, in so, I mean, my, my question is in the country. Great. My question to you is the current crisis that we're facing uh, right now in the banking industry, which is affecting a lot of Nigeria, do you think that it's because of, you know, the poor... Uh, manpower that they have or the banking sector have? Could this be the reason why uh, all of this is going on? We, we wouldn't attribute it to just the bank alone. We have to look more holistic into what is going on in the country. So because it's not only the banking industry that is losing people. So we have to look at what is going on in the country as to why people are leaving the country. And we have said there is economic hardship in the country, but there is also security re uh, uh, issues in the country. But let's go back to the economy. So someone that is earning 92,000 as a banker, 92,000 these days cannot even sustain you for a week in Nigeria. Nigeria, uh, for those who live in Lagos or Abuja, Lagos alone is even becoming more expensive to live than to live in London. And I'm saying this to you, I live in different countries. It's the, the cost of living, the cost of transportation, the cost of food, the cost of, you know, ge just general outing in Nigeria is becoming extremely high. And unless Nigeria drastically, you know, industrialized to bring, uh, to bring down the price of basic amenities, people will keep living to, to a greener pasture where they can earn a lot more money. It's happening in India. It's happening in Bangladesh. It's still happening till now. It's happening in China also. They're losing a lot of people for, uh, to the developed world. Okay, so um, I'd like us to begin to talk as to what this means in terms of, uh, you know, the implication for uh, the Nigerian economy. Now that we have, I mean, you have rightly said that uh, we're losing skilled personnel and we're also having uh, those who are not uh, very skilled affecting the banking sector. So what, what's the implication for the Nigerian economy? I mean, you look at how much the banking industry contributes to the GDP of the country. And the latest report from the last quarter of the year says that about 10.2 of that uh, revenue, over 200 billion of revenue, was lost from the banking sector alone. So unless there is a very creative measure to put in place, the banking contribution to the GDP may continue to be lower. Now, saying that, a lot of bank owners have to come together again and rethink how they can you know, contribute to boost the economy of the country by not only having the profits to their pocket, but reinvesting some of their profits into training and into helping the country to find solutions to some of the problems that is going through at the minute. So, so um, let's begin to also talk about uh, you know solutions right there. Uh, what exactly do you think that we can do now as a people, as first of all, and then as a government, you know, to solve the problem? First, we have to realize that um, the country is in a mess and it will take a number of years. I think it would take more than election to be able to repair uh, the country. And then we all have to become innovative. So, for example, 
We're still stuck with banking in terms of going to the physical banking when the entire world is already moving to, I mean, virtual banking. There are banks now in the UK, in the US, in America and stuff that does not even have a building. So the banks can cut costs in a lot of ways. The bank can retrain a lot of people to work from home. The banks can innovate technology. The banks can, I mean, there is a lot more development that can happen in the country. But also in terms of the country, I would always go back to Manslow hierarchy of need. The first need of the human race is a physiological need. As long as people cannot breathe good air, people cannot drink good water, people do not find food to eat, they're not going to be productive. You cannot have the economy growing when the basic need of the human uh, uh, who lives in that country are not met. So we have to start with, first of all, let's provide an enabling environment. The country, no matter who rules are, needs to provide an enabling environment, starting from, say, electricity. If the entire country is, you know, have electricity, you will begin to see the outward, the input of that, into the performance of the banks in human, you know, contribution generally to the economy. So, but I mean, uh, so that's that's one of the solutions. Okay, well, should I let you go on? No, no. Okay, so the other thing that the banks uh, or the country we need to, uh, uh, to to invest a lot on is to create more institutions where people can be trained for key sector, like technology and for banking and for agriculture. So in Nigeria, we have institutions, we have university, but what we do not have is technical institutions that can train people specifically for specific you know, jobs, like in the banking. You don't necessarily have to go to the university for five, six, seven, in some cases, seven or eight years to earn a degree to work in the bank. There are so many institutions in the country that can be created or that already ex existed. So one of them, for example... I mean, um, Abraham, Abraham, the reason we're having this conversation is that the rate at which, uh, you know, the Jakba movement uh, has gotten to is that is, it's on the high. I mean, so the Jakba trend is typically on the high. And that's why we're talking about this. And we see that the banking sector, according to reports, is that... Uh, you seem to have a lot of people moving away. We've had several sectors. Originally, we thought the doctors were uh, the ones that were moving. And then gradually, we moved from the doctors to the teachers. From the teachers now, we're in the banking sector, where you have those who are in the IT unit or department are moving, and what have you. Now, if you were saying that uh, we need to, as a way of solution, create institutions, not very uh, regular universities, but create vocational uh, not necessarily vocational, but, you know, specific uh, institutions of learning where people can go acquire knowledge and they don't have to probably earn a degree to, you know, get the knowledge and work in the banking uh, industry or sector. But see, the problem is when they gain this knowledge, they eventually are going to leave. You know, so people are training to become whatever it is they're training to become doctors, uh, they're training to become teachers, but eventually everybody is moving. So how do we stop the moving, uh, you know, the movement? We know we can't stop that. I mean, I, I probably would say movement is natural, but how do we reduce it to a barest minimum? Because uh, different sectors of the economy are crippling down. I'd like to remind you of what I said earlier. Every human being wants to be better off economically. So when people are earning less, I'm going to say that again. So when people earn 92,000 naira, you have to understand that when they look at that skill, can earn better in Ghana or in South Africa or in America, they're going to dream to be in those countries. So the rate of uh, the economic reward in Nigeria, the incentive, the salary, the wages at the moment, are extremely low to global standard. And human beings, no matter who they are, will react to that, no matter the sector that they are. Nigeria needs to work at bringing the level of income of our people, the minimum wage, higher. 
people are genuinely suffering. You know, I listened to some of the words of uh, Sheon Kuti. He said people are not jackpying, people are, people are escaping. So what it is is that people are suffering, and what people are looking for is a better place where they can make their life better. The other thing is this. I think we need to work seriously on de-emphasizing our talk on Jaguar. For example, I read a report, I read an article that is talking about Jaguar of the banks recently, and they're saying that Nigeria is the top three countries in the UK. That is not true. Nigeria is not even in the top 10 countries that are migrating at the moment into the UK. I've, I have a list in front of me. It's Polish, India, Romania, Irish, you know, Pakistan, German, Germany, Italy, Bangladesh, Chinese, and Portuguese. Those are the top 10. But everything you focus on magnifies. As long as we keep looking for the negative things to dwell on, to make a topic, a subject to, to talk about, we're not going to find solutions. We have to de-emphasize some of the problems we have in the country, in the media. This is what they do in Canada. This is what they do in America. America will not tell you that over 52,000 people are dying of crimes, of gone on a yearly basis, but they're going to report what is happening in Nigeria. We need to de-emphasize our problem a little bit more so that we can find internet solutions because whatever we focus on will ma magnify. Okay, so I, I mean, I really understand, but just to say that even if we have, uh, we get to a point where we say we have these institutions and uh, government creates that, but if you don't address the basic things uh, that should be addressed, then you would always have people who want to move because I know a lot of persons who say, I move, I mean, Lagos traffic is a lot. And so people have moved just because of the traffic. It's not because, <laughs> it's not because they don't have money to survive or because they're hungry. But, you know, they are moving because, I mean, it's not even favorable. The environment is not conducive. It's not uh, very okay for them to leave. And so that's why they are moving. But, however, there's also another fear. I mean, it's a conversation that sometimes we don't like to have because we think that, oh, that's dwelling on negative. Do you think that we probably might just have the conventional bans, uh, as it is right now in Nigeria, going extinct, that the fact that we have... 54% of the unbanked, we probably might just, you know, get a larger percentage to be unbanked. Now, the, the, the essence of this policy, according to the CBN, is that we want to, you know, cater for the bank. We want to show that the population of the unbanked are banked. Now that this is happening, do you think that we're going the other way to have the population that are banked to now get to the point where they are unbanked? And do you think that we gradually get into a point where uh, there might just be a total extinction or gradual extinction of the conventional uh, banks? You see, with the advent of technology, the country needs to move fast. So there will continually to be banked. What you want is to have everybody in the banking system, every human being, including children, in the country to have a bank account. It's one of the ways of gathering data. It's one of the ways that you can have good security in the country because you can trace people with money or by money. So wherever you can find money, you can trace people, you can trace crime, you can trace. So the real thing is that you really want to have, you want to capture every human being in that country in the banking system. But we have to leave this fixation on the way things are done. So when you go into the banking system in Nigeria, for example, you're still filling forms. You're still having a lot of forms. You're still having some of the, you know, some of the pages of the form are not, it's not even clear. So you're still going through procedures that people, countries have left behind like 30 years ago. Nigeria needs to catch up sectors, banking, you know, uh, uh, um, the, the different power sectors need to catch up with technology. We need, because of our economy of scale, we need to start doing like China and running ahead of the rest of the world in terms of technology. We've got the brain. But the policies, the public policy in Nigeria are very stiff. The public policy does not make life easy for sectors like the economy, uh, like, like the different sectors in the country suffer because of public policy. An example is what we're going through right now in the banking industry with a new note. I mean, yes, maybe... The president or whoever is behind wants to ensure that, you know, there's no cash around. 
for specific politicians not to be able to buy votes. But what is the data? What is the science? What is the science behind that if it is not personal? That is making the life of an average Nigerian more difficult. Even though you're trying to get at something, but we've seen that the rest of the world, in the UK, we just changed currency uh, because we're having a new king, but it's going to be phased out. I recall that, you know, in Northern Ireland, uh, some time ago, the currency changed. And I wasn't there for like two years. And I still had the old Northern Ireland currency, pounds, and went back there. But they, they will still take the, the, the note from you. But in Nigeria, why this knee-jerk reaction? Why making the life of people miserable? So it's not just, it's not just the banks. The government has to play a role. Public policy have to make the life of an average Nigerian a lot more easy. You have to get to a point, and I, I'm grateful to, uh, to know now that there are banks in Nigeria where at the click of a phone, you can actually open a bank account. We need to have more of that. We need to have advancement in technology so that people don't need, necessarily need to be you know, uh, in, in the physical bank. That will help you know, a, a, a whole lot. Let me say one more thing. You see, in terms of talking about why people leave, um, we're talking about the salaries low and, and stuff like that. When you look at what public officers, like the senators, the House of Assembly, the amount of money that moves around a Nigerian, you know, uh, uh, red chambers or, 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 or the green chambers, you will wonder that can we really not move the minimum wage in this country? Is it not possible? When you look at the profit that the private sectors are massive, when you look at the amount of money that banks are making in terms of, forget what they report, the actual profit that they make in terms of gross, does it really mean that you cannot bring Nigeria to the standard of South Africa or you cannot bring Nigeria to the standard minimum of some countries? I'm privileged to have been to so many countries in the world, over 50 countries in the world. There are certain countries in the world that I do not know under this ever why Nigeria will need a visa. I don't see why Nigeria will need a visa to Romania or to Ukraine. Those countries are not better than Nigeria. But because Nigeria is including Guinea Bissau badly. <laughs> yes. It, it, I mean most of I, I lived almost five years in, in Ivory Coast it, from my teenage into my early twenties. And you will hardly see an Ivorian trying to travel because there is permanent electricity. The, the, you, I mean in every home you can turn on the tap and you drink water. I mean, in the country, there is social benefits for every citizen. In the country, in South Africa, how many South Africans do you actually see in the UK? How many South Africans are there in we Canada? We have to go now. They're Abraham, trying. great. Uh, thank you so much. And being prompted that uh, we're out of time. It's a delight uh, listening to you share your thoughts on this. And we just hope that the relevant quarters will pay attention you know, to some of the issues that you have raised and concern, and then would have, you know, a great country. I mean, it probably would sound very simple, but that's it. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, it's a pleasure. Have a great day. We have been speaking with Abraham Great, who joined us this morning from Canada as a public affairs analyst. We took a quick break. Now, when we return, the federal government has established an investigative panel to probe alleged human rights violation. Uh, that's especially in the northeast. However, uh, we definitely have a guest join us when we return for a second conversation. Please stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>